Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The official start to the months-long race for the Republican nomination in the race to the White House is about to begin in Iowa. Iowa is the first major statewide vote to decide who will be the Republican U.S. presidential candidate for the 2024 election. But voters will have to brave temperatures as low as minus 23 degrees Celsius after winter storms blanketed the state in snow and ice. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are hoping a good performance here could give them a boost in the months-long race. But former President Donald Trump is the first choice for 48 percent of Iowa voters. That's according to the latest polling. I stand before you today as the only candidate who is up to the task of saving America from every single Biden disaster starting on day one. The disaster is what he's done. All he had to do is go to the beach like he always does and leave everything alone. Leave the border alone. We are the safest border in history. Rishi Sunak has said his government will not hesitate to protect our security following joint U.S.-U.K. strikes on Houthi targets in Yemen. He said the action aimed to send a strong message to the Houthi group that attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea were unacceptable. This is the first time Mr. Sunak has committed the U.K. to new military action since becoming prime minister in October 2022. Well, our aim is to de-escalate tensions in the region and actually restore stability back to the area. Uh, we faced an escalating series of attacks from the Houthis on commercial shipping, including uh, an attack on uh, Royal Navy water. That's unacceptable. It's right that we took proportionate targeted action against military targets uh, to send a strong message that that behavior is unacceptable. It was a last resort. It came after the end of exhaustive diplomatic activity, including a UN Security Council resolution. And now I think it's incumbent on the Houthis to recognize the international condemnation for what they're doing and assist. But we, of course, will not hesitate to protect our security where required. Multiple houses and buildings in the Icelandic town of Grindavik have been engulfed in flames after lava surrounded them. Extraordinary drone footage shows the extent of the damage being caused by lava that spewed from the ground after two fissures opened up nearby. The town was originally evacuated in November after an earlier eruption, with some residents being temporarily allowed home. Defences were then built in December to prevent lava reaching homes, but some have now been partially breached. Ukraine's military says it has shot down a Russian military spy plane over the Sea of Azov in what analysts say would be a blow to Moscow's air power. Army Chief General Valery Zaluzhny said the Air Force had destroyed an A-50 long-range radar detection aircraft and a I-22 air control center. The A-50 detects air defenses and coordinates targets for Russian jets. A briefing from the UK's Ministry of Defense said that Russia likely had six operational A-50s in service. The planes can cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. One of Taiwan's latest diplomatic allies has cut ties with the island in favor of Beijing just days after a new president was voted in Taipei. Nauru, a tiny Micronesian island, was just one of 12 countries that kept diplomatic ties with Taipei. But in recent years, Beijing, which insists Taiwan is part of China, has been poaching its diplomatic allies. Taiwan suggests this latest loss is related to the weekend's election results, which angered China. The election saw voters pick pro-sovereignty candidate William Lai as their next president, a man Beijing has labeled a troublemaker over remarks he made in the past supporting Taiwanese independence, which it sees as a red line. And tens of thousands of people turned out to watch King Frederick X succeed his mother as the monarch of Denmark in a historic moment for the nation. The new monarch blinked back tears as he acknowledged the cheering crowds outside Christianborg Castle in Copenhagen. King Frederick told a cheering crowd that he hoped to become a unifying monarch for the future. He also praised his mother, who formally abdicated an hour earlier, ending exactly 52 years on the throne. She is the first Danish monarch to voluntarily abdicate in over 800 years. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.